Tonight's episode of America's Hometown Horror is brought to you by Omeo. Omeo is a travel booking platform that makes planning a journey in Europe and North America effortless. Just enter your travel details and Omeo will magically give you all of the train, bus, flight, and ferry options for your journey. It's never been simpler to book your first real vacation for 2021. Best of all, using Omeo saves you time and money. That's a win-win in our books. It's been a terrible year, 2021, everything's back open, time to go book yourself a vacation. And Omeo wants to help you leave your house this summer by offering 5% off your next booking. I mean, when you're talking about a vacation, 5% off a vacation expense can be pretty hefty, so that's a pretty good deal. Just head on over to omeo.com, that's O-M-I-O.com, and use the code OMEO5, again, O-M-I-O-5, at checkout. Valid until July 31st for new users, so get ahead on that real quick. Uh, on all modes of transport, just the pick-me-up that 2021 needs. Omeo, plan, book, and love the journey. Terms and conditions apply. Omi, 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 oh! <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that song, that like 80s song, the Tarzan song. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I know Omi, what you're talking Omi, about. Omi, 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 oh! And we're back, baby, <laughs> and away we go! What is up, folks? What is going on? It has been a little while, a couple of weeks. I think the longest break that we have uh, taken since we started doing this show. But I've uh, been incredibly busy, so apologize for the lack of content. But uh, we are back, and we will be back over the next few weeks and for the rest of the summer. Talking all kinds of things horror with you guys. My name is Mike. I am the host of America's Hometown Horror. And as always, I am not here in the studio alone. I am joined by my two good friends, my two great co-hosts. Esteemed. Esteemed co-hosts, I should say. <laughs> There's Catherine. What's up, girl? Not much. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Good. Tired, but... Yeah. We've had yeah. a long couple of weeks. a long weeks, couple of weeks. But... And uh, also joined by Andrew. What's up, pal? Not a hell of a lot. Just glad to... <clears throat> kind of relaxing. I know. I, I guess de- <laughs> define relaxing. relaxing, or at least have nothing to do for for a few days. But uh, I think all things considered, you know, we we kind of mentioned this in the last episode we did uh, before we before we broke for everything. But uh, had a busy few weeks, uh, kind of getting ready for and celebrating the wedding of uh, of Andrew's brother Seth, who has been on the show before. Uh, and his lovely wife, Christine, they got married uh, last week, uh, avoided the tropical storm. Wedding went swimmingly, I say, folks. How about you? Oh, I thought it was one of the best weddings I've been to in a long time. It was awesome. Absolute yeah, blast. Ever. place we were at was pretty sweet, right on Whitehorse Beach down in Plymouth. It was a hell of a time. And uh, I don't think it could have gone much better. No, so. I thought it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. Every minute, yeah. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Awesome stuff. So what else has been going on? Anything else besides that? I mean, I know that's probably consumed our lives over the last couple of weeks. I know 4th of yeah. July went well. I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. It just feels like a blur. I know. I feel like I don't even remember what happens. we did for the 4th of July at this point. I, know I we mean, went, I know yeah. we drank. <laughs> yeah, I can remember that. Yep, yeah. that's a lot of that. A lot of that. It was a very uh, very celebratory wedding, we oh, should say. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's lots of, lots of celebrating. Lots. So, uh, so, hey, if you see Seth... And his lovely wife, Christine, around town, wish them a uh, happy marriage and say congratulations. But back to some things at hand here related to our podcast and our show. Had a chance to speak to our friend Tony from the uh, from Spooky World, the movie, I should say. All is going well with them, and I know that they are working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and I was told that we can expect a new website from them soon. Woo! Very, very quickly. And uh, lots more fun things to come in the coming weeks. I think... Uh, Everybody was kind of taking a break over these couple of weeks with the 4th of July and the summer season, and now people are starting to get back into everything. So. Well, I feel like people, like, you know, because of COVID, didn't really take any vacation time, and now it's like, you think it's, you're like, oh, it's summertime, I'm going to take a couple of weeks, and then it rains yeah. every single day. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's the like, an extremely gloomy July. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I mean, this, this honestly, I, I can't, they, they said on the news the other day that, like, this is the, fir- the most rain we've had over the first several days of July, like, in recent memory. Right. Ever. In, ever. Yeah, since in, they've, in ever. Since in they've ever. been keeping track, basically. Yeah. Which is just so. fucking terrible. Well, it's rained 13 out of 14 days now at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's Shark Week. I know. I was just going to say, yeah. if you were going to say, what have you guys watched? I'm like, Shark Week. Yeah, we watched some Shark Week. <laughs> some Jaws. I feel like the uh, the content this oh, yeah, year we did watch Jaws. Yeah. hasn't been that great so far from what I've seen. But there is... Um, 
one thing I have in the DVR that I definitely want to watch, and apparently uh, it was a Jackass Shark Week special with uh, oh, really? Knoxville, Steve-O, and Chris Pontius doing Jeez. stuff he, with sharks. One of them got his hand bit. I, I heard about that, actually. I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch it yet, but he I did was, hear there was, a, there was, was a pretty big accident on it. He was wakeboarding, like, <laughs> over Great Whites, and his hand, I think his hand got, I don't think, he, I think he Sounds died, like something but... the Wild Boys with Pony, Pontius and Steve-O would do. Right. Because they're absolute lunatics. Yeah, they used to insane, love Jackass yeah. growing up, and they're absolute mental cases. Oh, yeah. So... Can't wait to watch that. And uh, another thing of note, American Horror Stories, the anthology series, oh, yeah. premieres this Thursday. I've been seeing the commercials <clears throat> like all over the place. I think all I was over watching the, the Bachelorette last yeah. night over next door, and I saw a commercial for that, and I was like, wow, they're pushing yeah. this on like ABC? Yeah. Cool. And, like- <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, related to American Horror Stories... Might have something special related to that uh, coming up over the next several weeks with uh, somebody that we've had on our podcast a couple of times or one time that uh, might be a collaboration on that. Ooh. Yeah. So I'll tell you guys about that in a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what are you going to tell everyone else? Breaking. <laughs> well, it's not. It's, we don't have a little it, teaser? We don't have, we don't have, we, a little teaser. We don't have all the details yet, but I will, I will tell you guys after the fact. Because okay. actually, it's so recent, I didn't even get a chance to tell you. So. Okay. I know. I'm like, this is the first I've heard of this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, ready to get into some news, and then we'll hop into our movie tonight. Sure. A little bit of news. Not not too, too much stuff this week, but uh, a couple of things that, that, you know, should pique our interest. First piece of news, I should say, is that we got an announcement uh, from the premier... Halloween event in the country, and that would be Halloween Horror Nights based in Orlando. They're celebrating their 30th year this year, and uh, they announced while we were away on vacation down at the Idlewild that we will be getting a haunted house based on Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know if I showed you guys that or not while we were down there. You showed me that. Yeah, Yeah, but uh, yeah, so kind of a cool little thing, but obviously, you know, Halloween Horror Nights was called off last year for obvious reasons, but they're returning this year for their 30th year. Like I mentioned, select nights in September and October. And uh, this will be the se- the second house that was announced in addition to Beetlejuice, which was uh, a couple of months ago. I think we talked about that in the news a while back. But uh, sounds like it's going to be pretty interesting from the description they gave. And I-, I will quote here directly from the mouth of Universal Studios. <clears throat> Iconic scenes from the Netflix series will be featured throughout the maze, including the omnipowerful Red Room, the heart of Hill House, and the infamous Hall of Statues, where deceptive powers overtake anyone who enters. Apparitions will appear around every corner from William Hall, the tall man whose towering stature overwhelms everyone he encounters, to the ghost in the basement, to the bent neck lady whose disturbing scream and ghastly appearance invoke a constant state of unnerving dread. So obviously, the Haunting of Hill House series was directed by Mike Flanagan, who did Doctor Sleep, Oculus, Gerald's Game, and also the second season of The Haunting Show on Netflix, The Haunting of Bly Manor, which um, I did not think was as good as The Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House was phenomenal. Bly Manor was was pretty good. It wasn't as good, but we still watched it. Yeah, we still watched it. (laughs) And this house was actually supposed to be at the event last year, a year earlier, so it's actually already built and sat there Perfect. pretty much for the entire year. So they were actually, when they made the announcement, able to share a few photos of like the outside of what the house looks like, and That's it cool. looks really, really cool. Looks awesome. So I asked you guys, you know, I think having both seen The Haunting of Hill House, would this work as a haunted house for you guys? Andy? I think it would be good. I think it would be kind of fun, different. I mean, it's a haunt. I mean, it's a haunting of Hill House, and it's a haunted house. So. Yeah. Throw the hill in. Yeah, and there exactly. You go. I mean, it's no brainer. Yeah, it was definitely a, a slow burn show, but there was some pretty cool ghost and scary stuff in there that you can turn it into a haunted attraction. I think pretty easily. Yeah, don't yeah, you? I thought, yeah, I thought it was cool that you turn around and all of a sudden you just saw something like creepy, like. You'd be like, oh, yeah, like all the ghosts, and the, the random ghosts, like in the yeah. background that you thought were like just workers at the house, and mm-hmm. it turns out after the fact they were all just dead people that were yeah. inhabiting the house. Yeah, it was a really cool show. So. Spoiler alert: I haven't seen that show. Oh, I thought you have seen that no. show. Uh, no? Oh. no. Oh, all right. Well, now I feel bad. I thought you said you watched that. Did you watch Blind Manor? I, watch, I probably watched well, like a, a couple. Total I probably spoiler, watched like a, I mean. no. I'm not. It's not a spoiler at all. I was saying spoiler on my end. I haven't seen it. Oh, I think right. I saw like the first couple episodes, and you got bored and turned yeah, it off. Yeah, kind of, pretty much. Seems in line with what you. Uh, with what you got to you got to get me going right off the bat. I know like, you can't you can't slow roll me. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what I, that's what I got for news. It's kind of uh, there's been, there's been a lot of really? lo- yeah a lot of stories this week, but I think we have a good amount of ground to cover. And you know, I, I just uh, I, I didn't really see anything else that piqued my interest too too much. So I wanted to cover that obviously because I know it's an event cat that you and I have been to a couple times. And like I said, someday the, we'll go back. 
the someday we'll go back, but the premier haunted uh, haunted attraction event in the country is Halloween Horror Nights. So anytime they make an announcement with some sort of cool haunted house, it piques my interest. So hopefully, you guys, your interest was piqued yes. out there as Have well. You oh, it's peaked, right? baby. Peaked. <laughs> I am peaked, ready to go. You haven't, you haven't been to the... I've never been no. down there, no. No, it's fun. You should it's go really fun. It's fun. Yeah, if you're a horror fan, you got to go at least once, especially when they have, you know, good houses for a particular year. All right. Ready to talk this movie? Ready, go. All right. So, that means we are on to tonight's topic, and uh, that would be kind of the talk of the town, I would say, right now, related to, you know, streaming services, and... Uh, been getting a lot of hype, a lot of publicity, a lot of buzz on social media. Uh, there are multiple of these movies out now, but we're going to be talking about the first one, and that would be Fear Street Part 1, uh, subtitled 1994, because guess what? That's when the majority of the story takes place, is in 1994. Nice. When I would have been eight years old, so <laughs> right in the middle of, uh, of my childhood. So there's some uh, definitely some nostalgia feels in here. But uh, as we usually do, let's just start off with, uh, I guess, some spoiler-free thoughts and what you thought of this movie. Who would like to go first? Can I just ask a question before sure. I talk about this? Um, so when I was I was helping you with some of the facts on the outline, and it said, like, mm-hmm. um, it had, like, the new girl. In, so does that mean, like, in each one, it said, like, you know, Fear Street sequels and then it said like in parentheses the new girl and then it said part one part two part three and it does feature like women i would say but i just don't know if you like do you know did you hear that like or did, was that related to the no books idea or it, it's probably related to the books okay i think that might have been the title of one of the fear street books which will okay. obviously we'll talk a little bit more about uh what this was what this was based on okay but uh who would like to give their thoughts first i'll go because I'm off. still talking. Yes, yeah, so you might as well keep <clears throat> going, yeah. Um, so my overall thoughts, I liked it. I do like slasher movies. I like Scream, you know, all those, like, and teenage movies. And, like, I loved Scream when I was a teenager. And yeah. I was kind of thinking, like, <clears throat> it's nice to have a new, like, more gory, for sure, like, version of Scream, but also hits, like, other movies that have gone out, so it's now more, like, modern twist. Mm-hmm. And, like, kids, like, like my age, like, teenagers, well, not my age, like, right now. You're but I mean, my, No, I mean, like, like, my age right now, but I mean, at that time, watching, like, a teenage scary movie, it's fun. Like, you know, you have a bunch of your friends over, and you're all sitting on the couch with popcorn, and, like, just watching a scary movie, and it's, like, all teen, I don't know. I, that's why I really like Scream. Yeah. So. I think this definitely owes a lot to Scream, and, um specifically the opening scene i feel like there's a shot that's ripped directly from screen right uh kind of essentially copies the exact shot you know like when the killer is chasing drew barrymore at the beginning and it shows her like running in slow motion it was parodied in scary movie but the same kind of thing with that character that gets killed in the opening scene it's the same kind of like her running and the the guy runs up and stabs her like from behind in slow motion almost so i feel like it, it this movie definitely owes a lot to scream i think it definitely just like a lot of the stuff that's come out that is really nostalgia focused, I think this owes a lot to Stranger Things. Yes. Even though it takes place in the '90s and not the '80s, I mean, you get the mall vibes, you get the retro soundtrack. I loved the mall. I yeah, the was mall awesome. was really cool at the beginning. I wish they had utilized it more, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, I think it, it obviously draws inspiration from the books that came out, <clears throat> but it also draws a lot from. Some classic horror movies, I would say. There's some references, some Easter eggs, some nods, that type of thing. So, yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, Anything else you'd like to add before we uh, let Andrew riff on his thoughts? I'm I'm excited to watch the other ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm ready for it to keep rolling. Yeah. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Keep rolling, rolling. Come on! Was was that in the sound? That wasn't in the sound. No, no, no. That that was, Roland was... That was in the 90s, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, that was, that was like probably... 2000s. When Chocolate Starfish and yeah, the Hot Dog Flavored true. Water came out, I was in high school, school so that yeah. was probably like 2002, 2003, yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah, like 01, yeah, yeah it got to be somewhere I remember in that my area. friend burnt me that CD and mailed it to me, like, in the mail! Wow. <laughs> I was like, it was, and yeah. she's like, here, I didn't I like actually, this. I what bought, a waste I, of a CD. So I, uh, I, I, I bought a copy of Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog <laughs> Flavored Water. I had $3 bill, y'all, I had Significant Other, and I had Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water. Yeah. Yeah, so... I, I liked me some Limp Biscuit in high school. Absolutely. Sorry. Side note, and I I may be incorrect, but 
Has the price of a CD ever changed? Probably not. I feel like it's always like twelve dollars or. No, it definitely went up to like twenty. It used to be more back. I think when we were in. High I feel school. like it yeah. was like I feel like it was anywhere between depending on what you bought like twelve and twenty like dollars. Yeah. I I never bought like the big popular CDs because I was well, too cool for that. Too cool for school. Yeah. They'd, they'd I was like, where's down, the emo CDs? They'd, they'd go down in price as they <laughs> so like. It's a aged. hot topic to buy my CDs. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, as they if they were brand new, they'd be like 20, 25 bucks. But if you got went and got like an obscure 20, CD, 25 bucks? Really? Oh, yeah. Is that what it was? Oh, Probably. Yeah. I feel like that's a lot. I don't no. Feel like it cost I remember that. the last CD I bought, I think, was like 20. And I was, I think I got to the point where I'm like, I can't afford CDs anymore. Yeah. Like, I would have so many. I had, like, a whole What's binder the last time you of bought CDs. A CD? Couldn't even tell you. Because I'm curious what they cost now. Yeah. They should be, like, free. Well, Honestly, I, I think the last one I bought was one of the Family Values Tour live albums because I was at the show that it was recorded at, the one with, like, Corn and Deftones yeah. and Stone Sour. I was at in Flyleaf. Chick lead singer, Andrew. There you go. There's a band for you. I still wish I had a CD player in my car because... See, I do, I and do. I... I, but I have no CDs left because I don't know where they... Oh, they're all yeah. scratched to shit, right. or I don't know where they are. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I guess it's like a, kind of a throwback experience, but you can also just connect the Bluetooth in your car and just change whatever songs you want. So. Yeah, but I like... There's something <clears throat> to be said about listening to a CD and straight through. Having it skip. Yeah. <laughs> well, not skip, no, but just like the entire... Like, no one listens to entire albums anymore in order. Yeah. You right. just listen to one song here, one song there, but... There's a reason why they made an album. Yeah. So it's meant to be played front to yeah. And then there's songs that you would miss if you didn't listen to the whole yes. album. You know what I mean? Yeah. I listen to Dark Side of the Moon in its entirety. Well, you are you guys are both right because, I mean, as a man who now owns a record player and is building a record collection slowly, there is something to be said about the retro aspect of that and listening to something the whole way through, which I can appreciate for sure. So... So, yeah, uh, Andrew, what did you think of Fear Street 1994? We rambled on so long, I forgot that I hadn't said anything yet. We <laughs> <laughs> were just talking about Limp Bizkit and CDs. Yeah. And, I don't know, just roll, hot, we went from rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling. rolling on. Um, I thought it was a very well done uh, take, or not take, but rendition of a teenage slasher movie. Like you said, mm. played along with a lot of horror tropes in it, but also... It, it deviated in certain ways, which was good, I thought, which kind of made it more of a enjoyable watch because it wasn't just the same basic slasher movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I did like that aspect of it. You talking about the paranormal elements in the movie? Yeah. yeah. You don't see that. I mean, you do, but I'm trying to think. What do you see that in other? I can't. Like, think, I, can't really. I can't think of something off the top of my head. Like that, I mean, slasher slash yeah. movies. Yeah. I mean, you no. talk, obviously, like you know, Freddy Krueger. It's a slasher. Like Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, but is that Nightmare on Elm Street? Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Yes, but that's there's some that's, paranormal there's elements paranormal and, and in Halloween too. But I, like maybe not to this extent. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe actually, when you think. Well, about yeah. It. Evil Little Dead. Bit. Yeah. But that's. I'm saying like for a. I consider it like a for a teenage slasher movie. Yeah. Even though Friday the Thirteenth, I guess is yeah. Yeah, I can say that more of a I, horror I, movie. Yeah, though. I know exactly what you mean, though. This is definitely this has more of like a teen. This this feels like a movie that's geared towards like yeah, like you said, it's scream, it's scream with paranormal. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. I so. I agree with you there. And the phone calls too, and like the old school phone on the wall. Like if it's yeah. honestly like it takes place almost in the same era. Oh uh, yeah, well I think it's well 90, scream 96? came out in what ninety. I think it is ninety six. Yeah, I think so. It's around the same era. But at the time when Scream came out, it was very self-referential to like old horror movies. But I don't think it was. There was nothing really like at a mall or anything like that. So it, this this is a little bit different. This kind of plays more like I feel like they portrayed all the people in that movie. That, yeah, they're in high school, but it's like you know Nev Campbell's like twenty eight years old in that right. movie trying to play yeah. a teenager. These are actual teenagers. These are actual teenagers. Teenagers. I would assume that they're playing teenagers. teenagers you Unless know, that like, was um, Willis. Or <laughs> <laughs> Whatever his name is. Who's Willis? Uh, no. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gary Coleman. Gary no, Coleman. Oh, not Gary like Coleman. Willis? Oh, what you so talking that about? Actual, Willis? actual yeah. child actor. Yes, I did look that up. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I agree with everything that you guys said. Um, the paranormal elements were kind of what put it over the top to me, and I, I think the, the ongoing backstory and the lore that is teased throughout the movie that they clearly are going to pay off more on in the subsequent sequels. Yeah, is pretty interesting. <laughs> Also a genius marketing ploy that they are, you know, able to make this one move. I think it's a great idea. 
make these three movies pretty much all at the same time and then release them within a couple weeks of each other and you just watch the whole thing. Yeah. Kind of takes over. Well, everyone likes a good binge. Especially yeah. Especially if it's just a short. And it's summer. Gonna... These, are, these movies are meant to come out. Oh, right. easily. I mean, that I feel like that has a very big summer feel. And the second one, which we won't talk about here, we watched the first probably half hour of it and that is like ripped from the 70s summer camp slasher it's horror. Great. Yeah, it's pretty good so far. I, I definitely want to finish it, and I want, I'm, I'm going to probably watch all three. It's probably so, has like a yeah, Jason like element to it. Because, I like it. I mean, what's the, exactly. guy's, what's the guy's yeah. name? Yeah, with the bag. axe and the bag in his yeah. head. It's like yeah, the same Yeah, guy. kind right. of. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, I was a fan of this movie. Um, safe to say we all liked it to, to a certain degree, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, yeah. um, you know, we don't have to go into a ton of detail here, but we're actually doing pretty good on time. We're flying. It's amazing what happens when... Uh, you don't pregame too much to do these podcasts. Uh, I did appreciate the gore a lot. Yeah, the gore was... I was actually very surprised by that. It was way gorier than I thought. I thought there was going to be... I thought it was going to be more like Stranger Things than it was like Scream. Right. And... Because Stranger Things is... It's very good. And it's it's got some horror-ish stuff in it, but it's nowhere near as graphic and gory no. as it's, this was. It's kind of polite. Like, it doesn't yeah. show yeah. certain things. It kind of implies things, yeah. which is a, just a different style yeah. of... So, like, Stranger Things is the equivalent of, like, a PG-13, like, Steven Spielberg 80s horror, right. like, horror-ish movie, I would say. It's not uh, it's not anything like this, no. for sure, in terms of the gore and the violence, because there's some fucking nasty shit in this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of blood. So, uh, where would this stack up for you guys against some of the other stuff we've seen this year? Just ballpark. I, I think I... Over the last couple of weeks, I had a chance to rearrange some of my thoughts, and I, I think I have my definitive order. I don't think I have my order. And I, I have a, I have a, a I pretty, should, a, a pretty, a lukewarm, mild take here. Don't think this year has been very good for horror so far. Yeah, it's that, been okay. That, it's been it's been okay. Average. I still yeah. really like Spiral. I think the best. I have Spiral as my one, and I actually moved. Uh, wrong turn. That movie we watched that, up nah, to two. I haven't seen that. It's and then I, uh, good. I have this at three. Quiet Place at four, because uh, I think the I more the more the more and more I, I I think about Quiet Place Part Two, I think the the less I like it. It was still good, solid movie, solid, not great. Uh, followed by Conjuring, Devil Made Me Do It, which I was not a huge fan of, and then Godzilla vs Kong, and then Willy's Wonderland. For me, I know you guys didn't see Willy's Wonderland, but yeah, I just think it's it's okay so far. There's some uh, there's some bangers coming out I soon. I feel like though. it slid right in the middle. Yeah. It's like just like right there. It's still yeah. just kind of. It's nothing. There hasn't been like a. No, not but yet. But there's gonna be because we know Candyman. Can, can, yeah, you see, so excited. Candyman is gonna be the best movie. I bet you the best horror movie of this year. Yeah. Well, we got the trailer for Halloween Kills as well. The, the extended one that looks really good. Uh, don't breathe. Too. Uh, don't breathe. Two oh, looks pretty cool. And then uh, what was the other one that we got the trailer for too? The new Edgar Wright movie, horror movie, Last Night in Soho, that looks pretty cool. But all that stuff's coming out closer to to, uh, to Halloween. So, I don't know. I uh, like. What would your favorite movie this year so far be? I think I said it was The Conjuring. I think it still is. Wow, okay. Mm-hmm. And then See. Spiral. I think. Okay. I, I don't remember my yeah. list. It I don't probably either. changes, I depends probably on my down. mood, the many moods of Andrew Byers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, though. You gotta, you gotta check out Wrong Turn. That Wrong Turn. Wrong just, turn just Wrong Turn. It's not Wrong Turn 4. Nope, turn it's just four. called Wrong, wrong turn. turn. And it's, it's on Wrong Rumble. Turn. And it's um, it, was, it was on Showtime. We watched it that night. I think it's on one of the movie channels. Yeah, oh, that's I'll why, find that's out. That's why I don't have it. But, yeah. um, it was good, though. I, I actually really was surprised. Oh, I was Because I wasn't expecting anything, and I was like, wow, this is like really good. kind of just threw it on. Did, did, like... did I talk about Unhinged yet? Unhinged, Unhinged. The Russell Crowe movie? Oh, oh yeah, I talked about so it with you. You talked about it to me. You haven't talked about it on the podcast. About the podcast. So, yeah, tell us about Unhinged. Not really a horror movie, but it's fucking horrifying. It's yeah. probably one of my favorite Russell Crowe movies, because it's just fat Russell Crowe. <laughs> Pissed dad, off dad Bob Russell absolutely Crow. everybody. Yep. And it, the movie just starts off, this is probably a slight spoiler, but it's not really because it's the first scene of the movie. Yep. It's just Russell Crowe driving up to his house at night, and then he just goes inside, and you see him just light a giant fire and, like, basically burn his wife alive because she was cheating on him. Oof. And then wow. It, and then it just goes into him being in road rage the entire movie, yeah. just being a Take, lunatic. Taking revenge on people. Awesome movie. Yeah. It's from, like, you know how I said, you know, I need to be involved. You need to get me from the start. This movie gets you from the start. Okay. 100%. Fair enough. Very well done. So, Unhinged with Russell Crowe. Oh, making Russell movies, Crow. making movies, fighting around the world. 
Every time I see, I, I hear his name now. After watching that South Park episode, I'm always like, yeah. making movies, making music, fun like around, around the world. world. I'm Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. <laughs> it's always a good South Park reference for everything. Uh, yeah. Right. Guys, I want to talk about a little bit of the history of uh, Fear Street. Sure. And uh, how this all came to be with some factoids. Some, I'll leave some the, uh, quickness factoids there, the Sunny book, Boys. The book nerd stuff to you. Yeah, so, so um, full disclosure. Uh, probably the most, one of the most influential horror things of my childhood came from R.L. Stein, and that just happened to be the Goosebumps book series. Loved them all, read them all, owned them all, and I, they're probably still at my parents' house somewhere, which I really want to try and find them. Um, but yeah, Fear Street was kind of like his big other teenage horror series that he wrote, and it was, I think, geared a little bit skewed a little bit older than I was at the time that they were coming out, so I was more of a Goosebumps guy. I read all those. I'm kind of surprised I didn't read any, but I feel like I, I kind of went right from, like, reading Goosebumps to, like, reading other stuff, like the Amityville Horror, and then I jumped into Stephen King. So I kind of skipped over the, the Fear Street, R.L. Stein stuff. I, just, I went straight from reading Nothing. Books that I was instructed <laughs> to, to read at school. To, nothing. <laughs> to just watching movies. There you go. That you works. were better than me. I never even read a book in school. I had Spark Notes, Cliff Notes. Oh, you never. Yeah. Well, I mean, I probably, read, I probably read half of them. And I probably did the same thing. Yeah. Cliff Notes and all that I, stuff. For the other ones. <laughs> I only read The Green Mile. I remember reading that. In, uh, okay. Senior, yeah, I don't think I ever got year, lower so. than a B on a book report. Yeah. Even yeah. if I didn't read it. Yeah. Because yeah. I bet you someone else's interpretation or notes on the movie are most likely better than mine. Yeah. So... Plus, I mean, essentially, these days, kids don't know how good they have it. You had to, like, look all over for cliff notes. I feel like you could just go on to YouTube and Google or search for a fucking book report on, like, Of Mice and Men. Or, or you could just watch yeah. a 15-minute like, review about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I got this. Yep, okay, got it. Yeah, yep, got all the reviews. notes. There you go. I got all the formulas. But they don't have Let's the go. Book Let's reviews, ace this book though. report, baby. There's, yeah. no vi- there's probably videos on book reviews. I'm sure. I'm sure there I is. I'm sure there is. Of course there is. People read, right? There's YouTube shit for everything. So, yeah, no doubt in my mind. But, um,. I digress. So yeah, Fear Street was a, or is, a teenage horror fiction series that was written by American author R.L. Stein, Robert Lawrence Stein, I, I believe is what, what it stands R. For. R. for. So it's actually a little Easter egg for him at the beginning in the bookstore, which is a B. Dalton in the mall. Yes. Uh, one of the books on the shelf behind them is a reference to R.L. Stein. It's by Robert Lawrence. Those are the, the, gotcha. for his first two names. Uh, so he started writing these books back in uh, 1989. And as I mentioned, Stein is most famous for the Goosebumps book series, which there were a ton of them. Um, also been made into a couple of movies. There's a 2015 movie with Jack Black and then a sequel, which I don't oh, know how. Yeah, I never saw one. this. I, I actually really liked the one with Jack yeah, Black. I, I mean, it was it was definitely geared Black. towards a younger audience, but it was cool. I liked but it. Anything with Jack Black is usually pretty good. I know, yeah. It's Jack Black playing a fictionalized version of R.L. Stein, so it's Pretty cool. That's interesting. Pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, like I was saying, I, I could even argue that, you know, aside from a few other things, Goosebumps might have been the most influential horror thing of my childhood. And I uh, used to get them all at Annie's Bookstop in Randolph, baby. Wow. The day they came out, I would uh, reserve a copy. And then my mom. Walk right down there. No, I wouldn't walk. My mom. <laughs> my mom would drive me over there. And then I'd walk in and pick up uh, Haunted Mask, Welcome to Dead House. Did you ever buy them when they had the book fair? And Monster you know, the, Blood. I got yeah. the brochure for what The brochure. Was, to be at the, the I brochure. always got, like, the science. Like, uh, I used to stuff. buy, like, Goosebumps bookmarks at the book fairs and stuff and all kinds of I wacky used, shit. So. I would get, like, uh, a What's a book fair? A book fair. I think I got erasers and those pencil grippers. Yeah. You would so, buy erasers. <laughs> nothing, no books at the book fair, just other things. Yeah, other every yeah. other thing they have at the there book fair go. besides books. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so in 1995, a series of books inspired by the Fear Street series called Ghosts of Fear Street was created for younger readers. And were more like Goosebumps books. These, again, I missed these. Uh, in the sense that they featured paranormal adversaries like monsters, aliens, werewolves, what have you. And they sometimes had twist endings. And this is the specific series that this movie and the subsequent subsequent sequels are based on. The Ghosts of Fear Street series of the Fear Street books. Okay, uh, Stein actually stopped writing Fear Street after he finished the Fear Street Seniors spinoff in 1999, so it must have been about high school seniors. So 1999 they ended, but like all things, they come back after a little while for some more money. Back in 2005 in the summer, he brought Fear Street back with a three-part Fear Street Nights miniseries. 
also released uh, a few more books in 2014. So there's been a few of them, you know, since. Do you know how long these books are? they like 100 pages? Are they like a quick, like, they gotta movie? be real short. Yeah, probably short. 100 probably pages. Probably short. Max. I mean, Goose, maybe 120. Goose, goosebumps are maybe, maybe 120, 120 pages. pages. Yeah. yeah, that's like a good number. Yeah. I just love the covers of all the Goosebumps books. They were all fucking awesome. I do love the cover artwork. Yeah. Artwork. I'd love to get a big collage of all the covers somewhere and just oh, please, slap dogs. it right here on the wall. That'd please do. But uh, as of 2010, like as of 2010, Fear Street has sold over 80 million copies. So just like everything else that R.L. Stein writes, been uh, pretty, 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 pretty successful. Andrew, nice. Right? What do you think those books cost to buy now? I don't know. You, I mean, I, guar- can, I guarantee like, you. You can probably get it on eBay for like four bucks. I mean, there maybe might be a collector's work. item yeah. at this point for the original covers and artwork. Well, maybe are, they, yeah, if they have original stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that could be. There Maybe. are people collect everything. So. Yeah, I'd did be interested. They, I'd be interested to know. Did they have the covers that had like they were like kind of embossed, like you could touch them and they? So the actual had... when you ran your fingers over the right. Goosebumps raised, titles, it, right? it felt like yeah, Goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. buy yeah. Goosebumps Harland collection by R. L. Stein, eighteen books on Amazon, fifty two ninety nine. Okay. So you could probably, but they're not probably but like paperback. Orish. Those are yeah paperbacks. That's, that's a paperback. If it's the original oh, artwork, that's it's not that. Probably bad. the original artwork. Yeah. Outwork. Outwork. <laughs> Yeah, you, they look reasonable. Okay. And then you can just make a little collage on the wall. I could just stick them all right in the wall. I Anything love about it. that? Yeah. Yeah, pop. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Fear Street. So there was actually an attempt at making a TV series based on these books back in 1997. Uh, at some point before it was, re- you know, when it was in development, Viacom, uh, I think who is a division of Nickelodeon and Paramount and all that, or uh, that sounds all right. under Paramount, but yeah. um, they inked a development deal with Parachute Entertainment to produce a primetime C- TV series based in the Fear Street books. Uh, soon after it was greenlit, Disney, who owns ABC, bought the rights to the Fear Street pilot. Uh, and then the pilot episode, which was shot uh, for the ultimately unproduced Fear Street TV series, which was titled Ghosts of Fear Street, aired on ABC on July 31st, 1998. And the result? ABC's worst rating on record in that slot and a third place finish for the night in homes and adults 18 to 49. So it did uh, not do too well back in the day. Not uh, this time. It bombed. It bombed. (laughs) And uh, yeah, everything kind of died off with Fear Street for a while. And then, as we mentioned... You know, there's also a Goosebumps TV series that was, uh, you know, used to be on Fox. I, I remember believe, that. We talked which about is that now, It's now yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, I think we talked about it on the 80s and 90s horror cartoon, themed TV, yeah. TV shows. It wasn't yep. a cartoon, but it was live action. Oh, right. Sorry. Um, Sorry. So that was on. And then obviously, oh. you know, as, as some of these properties get a little bit older, they come back up in the uh, cycle of pop culture. That Goosebumps movie gets made, and they're probably like, hey, RL, got anything else you want to uh, give us the movie rights to? And. And then on July tw- July 2nd, excuse me, 2021, a trilogy of films based on the series began uh, being released weekly on Netflix, which of course started with Fear Street Part 1, 1994, which is why we are here today together. When did they nice. marriage? <laughs> <clears throat> I think it was 19, uh, excuse me, 1999. I think they filmed them back in 2019 pre-COVID. And they if did I like pretty much all correctly. at the same, they must I have think so. banged yeah. them all out. <coughs> Excuse me. Can we make that acronym a thing, being like PC pre-COVID? Pre PC pre-COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Or PC. Okay. PC. 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 Pre I'd go the pre All right, make it a thing. Yeah, go All for right. it. Pre-COVID. I like pre-COVID. That's pretty good. All right. So, with that being said, before we jump into our categories, just a reminder, folks, that tonight's episode of America's Hometown Horror is brought to you by Omeo. Once again, Omeo is a travel booking platform that makes planning a journey in Europe and North America effortless. Just enter your travel details, and Omeo will magically give you all the train, bus, flight, and ferry options for your journey. Don't make any treacherous <laughs> journey. I, I, knew, I knew the inside joke was coming. <laughs> Uh, that woman on YouTube. Yeah. So it's never been simpler to book your first real vacation for 2021. And best of all, using Omeo saves you time and money. That's a win-win for us in America's hometown horror. Time and money, baby. Not infinite resources, so when you can save either, it's a good thing. 
Omeo wants to le help you leave your house this summer by offering 5% off your next booking. Just head over to omeo.com and use the code OMEO5, that's O-M-I-O-5, at checkout. This offer is only valid for uh, through July 31st, because you know they can't be doing it all day, and it's for new users only. <laughs> so, uh, it's just the pick-me-up that 2021 <laughs> needs. Omeo, plan, book, and love the journey. Terms and conditions apply. Come on, you tell me you don't know what that's from? That's no. from Jack Chop. Omni. Oh. Definitely. Because you know we can't be doing this shit all day. <laughs> Definitely I'm like, order a fucking I'm jack like, chop to There's people listening that are like, I don't know I what he's talking that. about. Yeah, I've seen that. Like, yeah, I it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a great. Like, wait, yeah. Yeah. I was like, what? Uh, Rob a pharmacy, I, I take some OCs, I know, or drink a strawberry quick. I'm pretty sure it sounds like Omni has the formula. Jack chop. Um, Omeo's got the formulas for your vacation, boys and girls. They got all the formulas. <laughs> all All right, category time. We ready? Ready. Let's start out with the cat category. And the cat category, as always, is whether or not this movie was scary. Catherine, take it away. I feel like if I was younger, I'd think it was scary. I don't find it to be scary. Yeah. I mean, I get How much not... younger? Like three years ago? Yeah. No, younger, like if or... I was a teenager. Like but... six months younger? <laughs> like last week? <laughs> yeah. Younger? No. Um, Pre-birthday younger? <clears throat> no. I just I eighteen just, eighteen you'd find the scary because of because of my nitpicks or which I'll get to later 13. I will tell you why it's not scary that's all okay so not scary so no I'm gonna Andrew, go with no it's not scary. Yep, yeah not scary but again uh, not scary but uh, way gorier than I expected and some pretty great kills oh, yeah. which uh, my my favorite scene actually involves my best. My uh, best kill, so maybe, Mine, I'll, maybe I'll well, wait for we that. It's all probably all, well, all, I, all I same. You all are going to have the same, so I picked a different one for yeah. a completely different reason. Okay. I picked a different scene, too, but I do have the best death. I think we all agree on what that is. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to skip to that part. I mean, we can. All right, well, go ahead. Sorry. What? I said, okay, go ahead. Oh, it's the girl who gets her head in the meat uh, the, the bread, bread the slicer. The bread slicer. That was fucking that was gross. gross. I did not see that coming. I was like, she's going to get out of this. Yeah, she's going to get I out of that. I didn't see her dying, so I was like, oh, she's yeah. going to And I was like, aw. And I was, yeah. I was bummed out. Yeah. I was bummed that she died because she was a very good character that was right. helpful. They didn't expect yeah. to die. Shouldn't have died. No. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was. Which I appreciated. Yeah, it was kind of. It was. It was. I. I was kind of shocked. I was fine with the other. I was about as shocked as I could have been during this movie. This isn't a movie that's like shocking, like Hereditary or you know no, something like that. But, but I, I was like, damn, I was not expecting that. Not expecting no. that. Nope, at all. And you see <laughs> Came her out going. Of absolute nowhere. Yeah. You see her like struggling, going through it, and you don't think. Well, but you said you think she's gonna like make it out. But I also didn't think they were actually gonna show her head oh, getting shredded like, in the slicer. Yeah. Like. I was like, oh my god, they show because I thought they could have at least cut away. They did or a really something. good. That was a really good. Um, that was insane. Was, that wasn't CGI. That had to have been practical. Effects. That looked very practical. I mean, that was a, clearly a real. That, that, was, that was probably a real bread slicer yeah, with some sort of prop, something. something set up in there. That was yeah. That that looked great. And I th I feel like a ham going through. Okay, it. Oh. I mean, obviously the parts where, you know, they light all the all the monsters on fire and they all melt and then they all come back up out of the shit. Like, yep. that's CGI, but, like, I feel like this, there was a I pretty good amount of practical effects in this. Yeah, the axe Like, when that killed. doctor... Yeah, the axe kill in the head uh, with the blonde kid, who, more on him in a future category. But uh, what's the other one that I was thinking of? When they're in the hospital and that doctor gets the knife, like, right in his oh, neck yeah. and just, like, pfft, like, dumping out blood everywhere. That was, like... I was like, He stole my second yo. choice. Oh, uh, was it? I'm sorry. But uh, Dr. Betty, right? B. Eddie or whatever. It had like a B in yeah. front of it. Was he yes. like a drug dealer? The one that was the one that was helping he the girl was. deal yeah, drugs. Yeah, yeah I picked yeah, up on that, that too. Yeah. But that was probably my second favorite death for the sheer fact that how many drugs was that guy on? Because you're walking down a hallway, you hear people screaming. Yeah. You turn around the corner and there's the he's black like, receptionist. What's going on? Like massacred. And the guy's yeah. sitting there. He's just like, yeah, huh? yeah, and yeah, what's, like what's bang, going on? Jammed right in his neck. Yeah. Like an idiot. I'm like, you're an idiot. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. That was kind of weird. But. uh... Oh, actually, I had an I had an alternate favorite scene too. So we talked about our, our best kills, best deaths in this movie. I thought the uh, the opening scene in the mall was also very very good because it was nostalgic. Too. It was nostalgic. It's you know the, the lady's buying a book from B. Dalton. Right. It's got Maya Hawke in it from Stranger Things three, mm -hmm. who's Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman's daughter. Which Jesus Christ, she looks exactly like fucking Uma Thurman. She's not in this. She's in the second one. She no 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 she no the, you're thinking of a different girl from Stranger Things the, the one head? the one that works at the ice cream shop with Steve at Scoops uh, Ahoy she's in this she's the girl that gets killed in the opening scene in the mall that works at B Dalton that's Maya Hawk 
I didn't even notice that. Yeah. You're thinking of, in Stranger Things 2, the red-headed girl. And she's in the second she's one She's in the these. second one. Yeah, right. exactly. I didn't so even recognize that. Yeah. I didn't even pick up on So that. they're both from Stranger Things. Yeah. But I get, you know, it's again, it's it's playing to nostalgia. Clearly references Scream directly. That's the scene I was talking about. The girl that gets killed, she's running away, and the yeah. guy runs up and just fits in slow motion. He stabs her in the back and all that. So See, that's I have a huge nitpick with that. Really? That, that scene. Okay. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. Nitpicks. Teaser. <laughs> but also, do I, do I get a scene? Yeah, of course. But okay. can I finish my thought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead so go ahead. you know, you're buying books in B. Dalton. Uh, in the B. Dalton, there's lots of uh, books that would have been around at that time that you can pick up on, like some Stephen King stuff, some Tom Clancy stuff. Obviously, you get the R.L. Stein reference I mentioned earlier with the Robert Lawrence book. Like that was clearly uh, a direct reference to that. And then you have that uh, the one that ultimately ends up being the killer. You know, bring her like an orange Julius, and there's. I, I feel like they might have showed a couple of other stores in the I mall like the, the blacklight store because it was just like Spencer's. Yeah, Spencer's of, like, or like ho- or Hot Topic, yeah. like that Same type thing. of thing. And I'm like, oh, I remember when they used to just have like dark stores with yeah. black lights, like yeah. a section of it. Dude, yeah. I think I think there's gonna be a time when malls make a comeback strictly because of that nostalgia feel, mm. where people would be like. You know, like when we went bowling, we went bowling the other night. We they had a video mm. arcade in the back. Oh yeah, that, that was, was a bad. fucking that was blast. So awesome. Much fun. That, yeah, that was a great way to end our vacation. Like sometimes it's nice to go out and do something. So if you want to shop, I feel like if I want to shop, I would rather go to the mall than go on Amazon because I'm like a I'm like a um, spontaneous buyer. Like I need to just sure. see something and go. Oh, I want to buy that. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking for. There's that. also something to be said for instant gratification as well. Because yeah, if you order right. something on Amazon, you're going to wait for it. Because, oh God, waiting sucks. But like, you've got to wait like a whole 24 hours. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And then like, if you're yeah. buying clothes, you can't try them on either and you just hope for the best. And then right. if and then it's an extra step if you have to return it. Oh, yeah, because I bought like a box of clothes one time with, and it was so tight and like I was like ripped immediately. I was like, fuck, oh, fuck. it was from like yeah. China. I was like, yeah, what yeah. a fuck, a waste of money. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. was like eight years ago and I'm like never buying clothes online again. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Unless it's a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, any, anytime you open a scene, and clearly set in the 90s, in a mall, and they, uh, you know, cut to the scene, and they, they blast some Nine Inch Nails in your face, I was like, yeah, yeah I'm that was awesome. fucking in, baby. Let's fucking go. More on the music later. That might come up again. So, all right. So, what was your favorite oh, scene? Oh, I was going to say, well, it, it was the, you know, the bread slicer. The bread slicer one, one, but you can talk about something besides else. Besides yeah. that, I actually really liked the scene where... Um, Dina realizes that she still has to kill Sam and, like, looks at the lobster um, case. Yeah. And tank I'm thinking... Uh, ca- tank, tank yeah. whatever. And, um... It has water in it. Mm. She's, like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what does she think she's going to do? Like, is she going to have, like, have the lobster, like, bite her face off or something? That's what you thought I when you see I was just like, I don't that's, understand. That's the what thought that went into your head. You, you, <laughs> how <laughs> fucking high like, were like, you? Like, no, you didn't think she was going to drown her? No, I was like, what? And then she, all of a sudden she's there and she's like, I'm like, oh my God, she's going to drown her. I could see if it was actually a lobster case, like a briefcase filled with lobsters, no water, how you could think that. It's a <laughs> tank filled with water and she needs to kill her. You know, Maybe she'll use the lobster. Lo- there was a lobster in there. Well, there was a, there was, with the lobster. Well, there was the I one. There was the one random shot did. of. Well, yeah. There was the one <laughs> random know. shot of that lone lobster like walking down the aisle, like freed from the tank, which oh. I thought was kind of weird. So that's because she took that's, it. That's, I'm just, she that's a weird. That's, that's a weird thought to go to yeah. lobster. Yeah, she a lobster. Tank <laughs> because she's like, I'm gonna drown you, but I'm gonna be courteous and not do yeah. it with a lobster. And <laughs> things like poking her in the eyeball. They should have actually done that. That would have been pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like biting at her ears. But she, then she's like drowning Clawing her, and then I was like, wait, why didn't they just think of that from the beginning instead of the guy like being like, take these pills and then wait five minutes and take these pills yeah. and then do that? You know why? Like, why? Because it's a yeah, that was that was fucking stupid. Yeah, that was so stupid. And like. I don't think you need to take... Do you need to take that many different pills to... No, I don't think OD? so. Seems yeah. like a lot. And why wouldn't you give her a glass of water to take the pills with? Yeah. yeah she's Instead just of just shoving, them in shoving her face. six pills down your throat. Mm. First off, I think that's impossible because those were huge pills. Mm. You would be choking. So that would have been a good way to kill her. Right. Just, yeah. Here, Choke. why don't we just jam a loaf of bread down your mouth? You're in a grocery store. Psst. Why they didn't think of just knocking the person out by like... Stro- strangling them or drowning them? I it's kind of silly. Yeah, I don't know. It would yeah. have been a weird because then the movie would have been over. Also, yeah. another big. We haven't gotten to this one, but now I got another one. But I'll wait for Are it. We it's a pet peeve. This is a okay. We can start nitpicks. Yeah, sure. Um, it, I guess yeah, we can we can go to nitpicks and then we'll go we'll we'll go out a little bit out of order here. So yeah, Andrew, get the nitpicks going. What's up? Okay, so my nitpick my nitpick is 
They get in the ambulance to escape from the monsters after they tried to light them on fire. Yep. And they didn't die. Mm-hmm. And they finally realize we have to kill her. Okay. I'm pretty sure ambulances have defibrillators. You know, yeah. To resuscitate people. Yeah, yeah, also, good point. why don't you drive around while she's doing all the drugs instead of hiding in a grocery store, kill her in the ambulance, and then use the defibrillators to bring her back to life yeah. and bring the movie's <laughs> off? Okay. Otis got all worked up. <laughs> Movie. Done. Like, Sorry. that's too obvious. Otis didn't like yeah. that part either. Sorry, Otis. Yeah, that was, that was dumb. But again, I think you have to... I guess they're all teenagers, so they probably had to come up with some convoluted. They're all teenagers. Yep, 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 yep. Was like a wizard and knew everything about everything. Yeah, so I know he was. I'm he was a, he a border, borderline genius. I could see the uh, blonde kid that's the drug dealer not figuring that out. Oh, he was he was my nitpick. I fucking hated that kid. He was ter- he was a terrible character. I thought he sucked. He was a pain in the ass. A fucking loser. He had like the same like annoying like escalating tone and cadence of his voice with everything that he Dude. said. That just yeah, it just drove me insane. Yeah, like, yeah. Shut up. Shut up, kid. But uh, nitpicks, cat, anything? Um, so I didn't like the whole idea where they were in like the bathroom in the high school, and like they were just like, "Yep, people got murdered last night." And then there's like sh- like graffiti all over the walls, and like mm. they're just talking they're so just casually about it. everything. They're used to it. I know, but it just bothered me. I was like, people aren't bothered by this at all. Like it just it it bothered me. That bothered yeah, me. Yeah, and I was, I mean, I, I, I get that they were trying to portray the difference between Shady Side and Sunny Vale, right? Yes. Like, obviously, one's the rich place, one's the, the not so rich place. Yeah. Just, but yeah, that was a little odd. It was also odd how easily they could just, you know, steal guns and cop cars and break into the high oh, school yeah. and break into grocery stores, and there's never anybody around. Right, right. So. Um, another... Sometimes I wonder if there was like a zombie apocalypse during this movie because you're like, where is everybody? Yeah. Another, yeah, there's the cop, and that's about it. Yeah, right. So another, like, so so something that's very similar and is like a like a theme in Halloween that's been written about, like the original Halloween movie, is that there is almost entirely a lack of an adult presence right. or parents yes. in the movie. Yep. And that is also true in this, this movie. Yeah. So like in Halloween, you get Annie Brackett's dad, the chief of police. Right. He's probably the one. Right. But you never see Jamie Lynn Curtis's parents. You never see any of the other parents anywhere. They're all just you gone. The doctor. It's just uh, uh, Doctor Loomis, I yeah, guess. And in, in the and yeah, but there's a few adults, from but that, they're not in charge of watching people. Right. Well, right. I mean, technically, so, they are. That's yeah, and I feel like that's supposed to make everything scarier in the sense that these that these kids are alone. You know, pretty much, pretty much on their own. Same thing with uh, with Dina and uh, what's the brother? D- Dina and Josh. Oh yeah. Um, you never see their dad the entire movie, right? And He's you don't, not home. You, and you don't Allegedly. know, yeah, and you don't know what's up with the mom. I'm, you're to assume she either left or passed they away or whatever. They make some sort of comment about the dad or the mom in the movie, though, and I can't remember. It's like yeah. a, one line yeah. about the dad or something. So they yeah. do bring it up, but it's for like. A split second. It's yeah. basically yeah. like he's a loser. He's not. Yeah, here. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I love that they had the uh, the old school Bud Light cans just shoot everywhere because I definitely remember those from the nineties. The I'll old the old school of Bud Light cans. You'd know if you saw. Them. Um, what was your nitpick about the opening scene of the mall? Oh yeah, opening scene of the mall. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm mistaken. So all this stuff starts to happen, and she's like trying to get away, and then she finally sees him, and he stabs her once right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Never would have known that, other than the fact that he hit her with a knife. I would in the stomach, but I believe. In, right. That was the have... second stab, and that okay. was not the knife. That that was almost as if he gutted her. It looked like, mm. like it was like a, across the belly. Yeah. She. Seems fine. Yep. Crawls in. The only he finds it because he sees the bloody handprint on the like cover of the door, like the shade. Yeah. Then she gets up, starts running. I'm like, you got stabbed once somewhere. Then yeah. you got gutted, we, yeah. and you're acting as if yeah. nothing you can run, happened you can run a until marathon. he jumps yeah. from behind. It yeah, was yeah, the yeah, most yeah. ridiculous death scene I've ever seen. I'm like, did yeah. she? I thought because when you go into Netflix, the intro. Where the description of the movie is like a prank gone wrong, blah mm-hmm. blah blah. Mm-hmm. So when when I started watching this movie and he got when she got stabbed the first time, I was like, oh, he's using like a fake knife or something. It's like this is the prank. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, if it was a fake knife, wouldn't she realize that? And yeah. run- but she kept running away as if she wasn't actually being stabbed, right? Or wasn't stabbed. I thought that when he first stabbed her, but, there was a book there. Like she, he didn't actually. Yes, stab there was her. a book that prevented yeah. her from okay. going but into her stomach. She definitely yeah. got gutted on the second time. Well, she didn't get up the second time. 
He might have done no, the thing. Got he might have done the thing away. where he he didn't. Yeah. It didn't go like all. But he might have like swiped at her and caught a little bit of skin maybe on the that's maybe. What it was. So she but was probably looked, bleeding, but, but not it still gutted. looked as if she didn't get yeah. even cut. Well, again, this is. I th- I think that whole scene is supposed to be a riff on the Drew Barrymore opening scene. Oh, absolutely. Scream, 100%. Yeah. Makes sense. The biggest actress probably in the entire movie is killed within the first 10 minutes. That's right. true, yes. You know, in a very similar way with the phone involved with, with Drew Barrymore. let's be honest, yeah. a very similar costume to Ghostface. Yeah. Like, yeah. incredibly similar. Well, so that was... Can I roll into that? Yeah, of course. That was one of my nitpicks was I felt like the villains were really lacking any sort of creativity or like... It, was it, it was, intentional? I understand it, it might have maybe been. intentional, it might have but been. like... I don't know how faithful they are to the original yeah, books because I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's also... That's very possible. I don't was, know. I don't, I'm not familiar enough with them to know. boring. I was like, oh, well, that's the Scream guy and that kind of guy is an axe with a sack over his head and then like... Yeah. This girl's just singing and she looks like Harley Quinn in a weird way. Like, I don't know. Honestly, some of the... Some of the creatures monsters killers whatever that they showed in the flashbacks like when they were talking about everything that happened in like the 50s and the 60s and the yeah. 70s oh, yeah, the, actually looked cooler than the any of the other the milkman guy yeah. or like yeah that looked or the like the weird kid that had like the weird yeah. mask on he, like yeah, that thing looked that, that would have cool. been cool well maybe we'll, well they're see probably maybe you'll see him in the other ones yeah. because yeah. now we're going back further in time yeah. so then the 1956 yeah. one's going to be a lot more relevant yeah. it's going to be the way they talked about yeah. the 1978 one and this one possibly yeah that's that's actually a good point yeah, and then um, the only other pick that I had was that um, Dina's voice, the main character, her voice annoyed the fucking shit out of me. I don't know why. She oh. just, yeah. Just the way she talked. She annoyed so, me some, in general, Some of the things like the her in, inflection kind of yeah. just drove me bananas. I agree with that. So, okay, so we have covered, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so I guess we didn't really talk about cast stuff yet. How do you think this was for a, a group of teenage actors? Do you think everyone was okay for the most part? Is there anyone that you didn't like? I didn't like the, the blonde goofball. Well, I didn't like Dina, and I didn't like the blonde guy. Yeah, they both were kind of annoying in certain ways. Like, they ways. could have done without him. The other characters were good, I thought. I yeah. They did a good job. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. So, Kat, was there anything about the cast that you liked or disliked? It felt like if anyone, like, I was going to replace... I Well, in general, I thought the cast was... I don't know... Kind of boring. I don't. I didn't find anyone to be like, oh, I really like this character. They were all kind of like just there. Yeah. Acting, doing their thing. I didn't find anyone to be like, wow, I really like that character. And you know I, who I really liked? Who? The little brother. He was the best he was character awesome. in the yeah. movie. He yeah. was probably, yeah, he was absolutely the best because he was just, yeah. yeah. I'd say he's cool. But yeah. the rest of them, I was like, uh they're they're fine. Yeah. Sam Sam was more annoying than Dina. I Sam thought. was, but annoying. Dina's Dina's voice annoyed me. So like little things about each one of them yeah. kind of annoyed me a little bit. But overall, whatever. That's kind of a huge nitpick though, because the two main characters in the movie were, were annoying both annoying, and, and they got everybody and, like, else killed. Yeah, so they can go. Fuck they yeah, they did kind of like yeah, they kind of did get everybody else killed. Well, and the whole time they were like. They did they nothing were, deserving of right. being the finale, no. the final ones, except yeah. for Josh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it was it was funny because like they're they said at one point that, like the whole group was like well they don't want us they just want her yeah and then they try so hard to like help her out yeah and they end up dying yeah well <laughs> I get it though because I feel like at, at the heart of this story is a love story about Dina and Sam so I can right. understand why you'd kind of want to have the those two and Josh as the last yeah, people I get standing that, because right? they make them a little less worse yeah than, like, yeah, not that yeah they, they, they could have kind of like hey I like these people not hey they killed everybody right yeah. right right give yeah. them some redeeming yeah, qualities I agree I agree so all right uh haunted attraction would this work oh, I yeah. say yes absolutely yeah the yeah. school you could do when they were mm-hmm. in the school and they school the mall the mall uh the grocery store yep you could do a bunch of stuff with this. I think yeah. the lobster case. The lobster. The lobster case. Yeah, the, the ambulance. Lo- the, the, the death by lobster. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Also a good variety. Or just like the street, like where the girl was. Yeah, she was like I would say good corner. good variety of, yeah. uh, you know, different types Options, of killers and ghosts, monsters, whatever they actually are. Yeah, yeah you, could, you could make that scary. Could work. Honestly, I feel like this is really popular, and Halloween Horror Nights, as referenced earlier in this episode, has a working relationship with Netflix. They've turned... Two seasons of Stranger Things into haunted houses. Right. They're now turning the haunting of Hill House into uh, a haunted house. And there was actually talk they were going to turn um, that Sabrina series that oh, Netflix, yeah. was on Netflix into oh. one too. Didn't okay. happen. But uh, 
I mean, I, I could see, I could see it. Personally. Well, they could also because all three are coming out so close to each other, they could incorporate all three. They could, right? They could have like a camp. One of them because I'm assuming yeah. that's going to be a part. Yeah. Yep. You can have the yep. milkman. You can make it like much better. Yeah, they could do a lot with this. So I feel like it's uh, it's 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 absolutely a, a possibility. Maybe Probably more happen. of a possibility. They'll have than enough content. Some of the other stuff oh, we yeah. talked to about recently. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so last category, actually, uh, well, second to last category, MVP. I'm gonna go. I with already said Josh, so I, I, I guess I'm gonna stick with that. I think I'm gonna go with Dina. Dina. Okay. Because she just seems like she's always trying to help people out. Yeah. Even though she's just trying to help out Sam mostly, but he, she's also trying to balance. look out for her brother and all yeah. that stuff. So I mean, I, I kind of like I said, I already said Josh. He, he just gave me the like the most serious Stranger Things vibe oh, of yeah. everything, and I loved like you know watching him sit and talk in an AOL chat room with those old school oh, that sounds that awesome. I remember all the time, and then uh, and he's like, "Hello, my lady." Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he had the little like the cork board in the basement, like with yeah. all the history and stuff. I was like, I could just totally picture myself doing something like that as that a kid, was pretty cool, like yeah. you know, on AOL with my dial-up modem. Yeah. But uh, Andrew, what about you? What was the name of the girl that got her head in the bread slicer? Oh, um, I Rachel? actually... Maybe it might have been Rachel. Rachel. I don't know, actually. I don't think it was Rachel. I feel like she looked like a Rachel. We can look it up. I'll um, look it up. But whatever her name is, I thought she was a very important character in the movie because she's the one that kind of gave Josh the confidence to lead the charge. Yeah. Like, she was like his, like... Yeah. Robin, basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's why I was so upset when she died because I was like, oh, they... Kate. Kate, yeah. okay, yep. She was such a good character and was very helpful in a lot mm. of ways, and it, it was just trying to fix the situation. Mm. Even when she said we should just kill this girl, Sam. Right. Which, looking back, only one person would have died if he had done that. No kidding, so, right? Yeah. That's kind of disappointing that. in a and weird way. And she's possessed again anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, right? Uh. Well, if they let her die, then there'd be no movie. And there'd be no best death. Mm. It's true. True. That's true. Truth. <laughs> true. Truth. You can't, um, you can't nitpick these movies too much because there's... They're meant to be nitpicked. Right. Also, I mentioned this briefly before, like, you, you gotta say the soundtrack is a huge, oh, huge yeah. factor in this it movie. It was Big awesome. Fucking Nine Inch Nails, Bush, Garbage, Cypress Hill, I wonder if Prodigy, it was Spotify. Yeah, it was Pixies, awesome. Soundgarden at the end, like, Oh, when awesome Josh is, like, walking through the hallway towards her, yeah. and he's like, up, up, down, down. Le- yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. The, 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 the code, the Sega code, or yeah. whatever it is, code or the Nintendo contra? code. Yeah, Contra code. That's right. Contra Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty. Yep. Fu- I like that part. I yeah, that was pretty cool. Good. Yeah, good stuff. So normally, I would ask if it's deserving of a sequel, but uh, we know we're going to get two of them. Yeah. We already I'm have excited. one, and there's a second one. So I, I will definitely watch these other two. Absolutely. What about you? Can I say one more thing? Oh mm-hmm. boy. I secretly they never say it, but I feel like again, what's her name, Lisa? Kate. Kate was <laughs> actually the girl that Josh was talking to on the internet. She kind oh, of did... maybe. Oh, that's a good call. I never yeah. even considered that as a possibility. And she knows it, but he doesn't. I yeah. feel like she knows that that's him. Because it's just, it's just certain things that go on. Like, she plays dumb with certain things, but mm. she's so quick to be like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, as if she already knows that, but she's letting him. Because she's... Huh. Mm. That's my lady or whatever he says. My lady. Interesting. That's my lady. Theory Maybe on that. I'll rewatch it. Wow. That piece and see. Okay. All right. Huh. Interesting, Interesting, Andrew. Yeah. Good. Good call. Good call. I wonder if that's a thing, hmm. or I wonder if that will be paid off in one of the future movies. Right. There's got to be something behind it. Yeah, it can't I think just so. Be there. Who's that random person he's talking to on AOL? Yeah, that's a good point. On AOL Instant Messenger or yeah. a chat room, whatever the fuck yeah. he's in. Yeah. All right. Cool. Guys, any final thoughts on Fear Street Part 1, 1994? I'm excited to keep watching them. Yeah. It, it yeah. did enough to make me want to watch the second one. I agree. Oh, really? You're going to yeah. watch the second one? Yeah. I yeah. Oh, good. almost watched it back to back, but I didn't want to go too aggressive. I yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think it was a, it's definitely, a, it's a, it's a, a big win for Netflix. It's it's doing well. It's like I said, kind of the buzz of everything on Twitter and it's, social media right now. It's very entertaining. It's yeah, entertaining. entertaining it's movie. Very entertaining. Yeah, movie. I had a good time watching. You don't have to think yeah. about it too much. You just yeah. put it on. You watch it. Yeah. You can not pay you're attention. Not, you're, not minutes, you're not watching The Exorcist. You're not watching fucking you know. Uh, or well, and it wasn't what, really or the, like whatever, a but thriller edge of your seat pants. Like it's just an yeah, enjoyable. It's, it's like you watch. said, it's that very like, Stranger Things vibe to it. It's just kind of like 
a thriller edge of your seat pants. I don't is that what you said? Trying to that, isn't that uh, why? It's like a thriller, like the edge of your seat. That sounds like when someone's trying to drown you in a lobster case. <laughs> oh my god! Like it's, edge of your seat, like, like a your, white knuckle thrill what did I say? ride. Thriller edge will, of your you seat will pants. Find out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a little well, just just dyslexic talk, cat. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, all right. <laughs> Otis, you don't approve either? No. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, well, if there's nothing further, I think that's going to put a bow on this bitch. This has been another episode of America's Hometown Horror. It's been it's good to be back, guys. Uh, it is. I, have, I have missed hanging out in the studio talking with you, talking some horror. Good couple of weeks off, but uh, good to be back in the oh, saddle. Yeah. Back in the saddle again. You're all about the inside jokes with the Aerosmith. And, uh, how is that an inside about? joke? I mean, all these Jack like, Chop? I mean, it's a Well, no, that, but you said back in the saddle yeah, it's again. A, it's an Aerosmith song. Aerosmith song. We yeah. did, I did the rolling roll. Like, we we yeah, do that all the time. It's, yeah. That's what we do. It's not an inside joke. It's an inside joke if you've never heard the song. That's true. Fair. Which okay. most people... Or it would be an inside fair. joke if it was a joke between the, thru- the three of us that nobody else yeah, knew about. First off, right. it's not a joke because it's really not that funny. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate no, that. I was talking about what I said. That's a joke. No, it's a song. Me going rolling, rolling. That's not funny. That's, that's just me being an too. idiot with Tourette's. <laughs> oh, my God. I do not have Tourette's, uh, nor do I besmirch anyone that has Tourette's. Of course. We would never. We would never. <laughs> so, if you're interested in more of what we have to say here at America's Hometown Horror, you can check out our website. That's our latest edition. Just go to ahhpod.com. That's apod.com. That is our newest our newest addition to the interwebs. You can also find us on YouTube and Facebook. Just go on both those platforms and search for America's Hometown Horror. You can find all of our episodes there uh, on YouTube, and you can find all of our posts on Facebook. Uh, as well as Twitter, at Hometown Horror. You can find us there. And on Instagram, which is where we post the most frequently, at Hometown Horror Pod. Yeah, the postest with the mostest. The postest with the mostest, baby. You can also drop us a line at Hometown Horror Podcast at gmail.com. And you can find our show pretty much anywhere that you get your podcasts. But, uh, you know, specifically Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, and wherever else you may get your shows. My name is Mike. This has been another episode of America's Hometown Horror. Thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate you listening. And once again, I have been joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Andrew and Kat, and my not-so-esteemed pain-in-the-ass dog, Otis, the official hound dog of America's Hometown Horror podcast, at the Spooky Hound Dog on Instagram. <laughs> Say goodbye to your listeners, folks. Adios, See muchachos. you on the streets, kids. Yeah. Good evening. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Mike from America's Hometown Horror, and just wanted to say thank you again for listening to another episode of our show, because of course, we would be nothing without you listeners. If you are interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I would highly recommend you check out uh, some shows by our cohorts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. That's right, the Inebriart Podcast Network, folks. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find the Inebriart Podcast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, Retro Redoctopus, and Old Colony Cast. Head on over and give them a listen.